plenty to go at in this episode. We're foxing on a private job. I share my top tips for making zeroing a thermal scope nice and easy. Plus, I announce the winner of the Olight i3e as we take a look at one of Nighttime's essentials. Plus, I give my opinion on the Hike Falcon FQ50. This is Team Foxer. Well, that's a result. Well, hey guys, it's mid-December, hence the festive jumper. And before we get on with a foxing action, just to note, I will put some timestamps down at the bottom of the screen because in this episode we'll be taking a close look during the foxing action at Hike Micro's new Falcon Spotter, the FQ50. Uh, I did promise we'll take a closer look at that last time out. We'll also be taking a closer look at a very essential piece of foxing kit or even shooting at night time and that is a head torch and there is an awesome new small one from Olight, the Perrin Mini, so we'll have a look at that as well. And also wanted to bring to your attention um, with Christmas literally just around the corner that the recommended retail price for the Stella um, rifle scope has just been reduced. Uh, this is now less than £3,000. Um, it still seems like a lot of money, um, but it is by far and away one of the, if not the best thermal rifle scope, I think, on the market. You all know it's accounted for many, many foxes. I am so reluctant to take it off the rifle. So let's crack on with the foxing action and I will see you in a little while. If you'd like to keep up with the instant action, then follow us on Instagram at team underscore foxer. You join me on a solo mission to a couple of private residents uh, that have suffered fox uh, predation in the past on their chicken populations. So I position myself in between the two properties and I've been in place for about an hour periodically changing between the Icotec GC500 calls and also giving it a few lip squeaks. It was a little while, but eventually we caught sight of our first fox. Always worth checking around just to make sure you've only got the one coming in so your uh, attention is focused uh, on the one animal. And a little bit of patience, a few minutes later, he comes into the same field as myself and starts making his way to the right. Uh, he's now in a position where I'm comfortable to get over onto the Stella. So I'm now uh, looking through the rifle scope off the recon trigger sticks and the fox's attention seems to be somewhat distracted by a mouse, I think it is, he's uh, decided he's going to have a look at. So I thought I'd take the opportunity and take the fox there. You've perhaps noticed it's around 10 minutes later now, and I'm just uh, scanning around all of the area to make sure that we haven't got any of the foxes that have been coming in from even further away into the calls. Uh, what you, the last thing you want to do is go out with your head torch on and disturb everything uh, when you could have had another fox coming in. Uh, it's also a good one to take out on the neighbouring farm, as you can see there. That's their long strip of pheasant cover, so definitely a good one to get. I'd have to be honest, I thought I'd bump into a fox a bit sooner than that. I'm guessing this is a vixen, it looked quite small in the scope. It did need a second shot. Yeah, that first one straight through the way. But, uh, yeah, this is a vixen. Um, yeah, 100 and I don't know what it was actually. 120 pace is that 116 yards maybe so uh, anyway it's a good result another one spotted with the falcon there from the location where you can't see it it's way over there in the dark in between the two properties that we've had several foxes now so the owner will be chuffed and uh, that's a great result I think that's number 109 now for the year being the time of year that it is, I wasn't convinced this would be the only fox in the area, of course. It's well into November when I filmed this, and foxes are already starting to pair up. I did, however, uh, film this muntjac at 67 metres, and in, even managed to see all these mice running around in the field, which shows the quality here, I think, of the falcon uh, spotter. I went back to the car, put the fox in, took my wellies off and actually noticed something else mooching around in the field just in front of the property. We'll come back 
uh, to this fox in a short while as we get ready to announce the winner of the i3e competition. Before that though, Olight themselves have got a Christmas sale on where you can save up to 50% on a range of products including uh, one of the most essential pieces of kit for all nighttime hunters, a head torch. This is a little belter and this is the Perrin Mini. Every time you see me foxing at night on one of these videos, I will be filming using an Olight Perrin head torch. This newer small version is a serious powerhouse though at 1100 max lumen output. In the box, you'll get the Perrin Mini 2. You will also get a USB magnetic charging cable, the headlamp base, headband and user manual. The 3.6 volt 650 milliamp customized uh, lithium ion battery is enough to power the headlamp even on a perfectly usable medium setting for seven hours. High mode will get an impressive 100 minutes of runtime. Um, I also really like the way in which the headband for this torch um, uh, encompasses the um, pocket clip as well. It means that once it's in there you can shake it around quite a bit and it's not going to fall out so even if you're that extremely uh, energetic type of person that likes to run around of an evening uh, it will be good for that. Weighing in at just 91 grams it's very lightweight and comfortable. I've used it multiple times now and it is now my go-to head torch when I'm out walking the dog at night time. You can get yours uh, on offer as I mentioned on the 12th of December with up to 50% off on a range of products so make sure you go ahead and check out the link in this video's description. Okay, who wants to know who's going to win the i3e um, from Olight then? And drum roll please, the winner is Terry Crowford. Thank you very much indeed for your entry. I'll get in touch with you and arrange to get that torch sent straight out to you. Right, so the Falcon FQ50 spotter then. Um, it's the newest uh, spotter in the lineup from Hike Micro and it boasts um, some industry leading stats. So we'll take a little look um, at the contents in the box. Plus, I'll give you my overall opinion of it. I've been lucky enough to be using it now for a few weeks. It's been out in the field multiple times. You may have seen the foxing video last time, even when we were out in thick fog, and it still performed really well, as did the stellar scope, um, seeing that fox come all the way in from a long way off. So, um, in the box, you will receive your falcon spotter. Uh, along with the neck strap, you do get this um, soft, quite thick in fact, excuse me, neoprene pouch to keep it in. Um, so that's quite handy if it's in the truck on the seat and stuff like that to stop it getting a, a knock. You also get a shoulder strap for the hard carry case, so that's good if you're packing your bags and, uh, and going on a bit of a road trip. You've got a lens cloth, quite handy for cleaning both the eyepiece um, and the lens as well. A wrist strap, so if you're just going to be using it in your pocket, um, although uh, I can highly recommend using a neck strap, it just makes it so much easier, uh, especially when your rifle's on sticks and you're kind of swapping between the two. Um, I like the fact that you get a, um, a decent quality 18650 charger, and of course you get two uh, 18650 good quality batteries, and then the USB-C cable, which doubles up for the um, charger to be plugged into a USB socket, but it also plugs into the USB-C port on the bottom here um, to enable you to be able to extract the footage from um, your spotter to your laptop. Um, that's pretty much everything you need. Um, I really only ever use that and the charger. I haven't really used much of the other stuff other than the lens cloth. Um, and I don't think you really need to, um, to be perfectly honest with you. The type of foxing I do, which is predominantly from the vehicle, or I might then park up, walk over, 
um, and then do a bit of calling and so on and so forth. Really, it's just the neck strap and that spare battery that you're going to want in your pocket. That's all you're going to need. The main features of the FQ50, well, it has a 640 uh, by 512 resolution sensor, which is a 12 UM. Um, it has a 10 by 24 by 768 resolution uh, 0.4 inch OLED display eyepiece. It's got a highly uh, sensitive thermal uh, module. It's net um, sub 20 millikelvin sensors with sensor. Uh, which is an industry first and it has a uh, focal lens uh, fo focal length lens of 0 0.9 so that's an f 0 0.9 lens that all sounds um, rather technical but what does it actually mean well to you and i uh, what it means is that this um, thermal device is very capable at spotting things a long way off much further uh, than, can, than you can shoot it's great in the flatlands here in the fens because our fields do stretch on for several hundred meters at a time and you can see foxes and deer um, certainly in the next door neighbors or even the next door neighbors uh, to that field so you can see a very long way you can also then make um, out what that animal is because the unit is very able uh, to be able to focus very well on the heat source that you're looking at uh, the slight trade-off with that um, is that it's probably slightly more focus fussy, I will call it, than other spotters that have gone before it. Um, once you're focused on the animal you're looking at, it's beautifully clear. You can see all the detail on it. Um, and, you know, um, I've, I've filmed some roe deer uh, a few weeks back now at 100 metres. And I used the zoom button. You've got that nice, smooth stepping in, in zoom. And even on eight times, um, I was able to see the difference, uh, you know, the different shapes on the animal, um, very clearly identifying that animal um, at distance and when you zoomed in. I think historically, when you did that uh, with spotters, you zoomed in, it went incredibly pixelated and you were just looking at a heat blob. Um, it was very difficult to actually identify what that animal was. So um, I will honestly say that I think um, thermal spotters for the last couple of years uh, you know they've not really felt like they've been advancing too much you know some of the images have got better definitely um, but moreover when you zoomed in it definitely didn't feel like it you know you still like you were playing a game from the 1980s on a spectrum or something um, with this this actually feels like the first step forward um, I think in technology so that's probably its biggest um, plus point at the moment Ergonomically, it's design um, in its tough magnesium housing. You get hold of this thing and it feels solid. And, you know, so it, it, it's not the lightest spotter in the world. It's certainly not heavy by any stretch of the imaginations. Um, again, I'll put a link in the description for the full um, specification breakdowns for its weight, etc. Um, but you know you've got it in your hand, um, you know, and, and it's not heavy to have around your neck for several hours while you're out foxing. I love the ergonomic design of the buttons and I also like the fact that the power button is kind of separated uh, from your menu uh, and uh, you know camera button etc so you can't accidentally turn it off. It is the case um, with some of the scopes whereby the power button is very close to the camera button so when you want to actually press record and I've done it myself you accidentally turn the unit off and that can be rather annoying. The last thing you would want to do is if you want to start filming a fox or deer or something of that nature is then turn the unit off and, and lose that footage. Um, so that's really good. Um, it takes around seven to nine seconds to boot up from cold. Uh, it will refresh itself and then it's ready to go. So my uh, my tip for using it would be turn it on when you go out and then just tap the power button and it'll go into standby mode it will instantly pretty much come out of standby so again when you want to use it um, and i did this in the last video you know i i tapped it it comes on and then you can press that button there to start recording it takes less than a second to come off of standby so there's no need to turn it off off each time the battery life's good for um, up to five hours and i found it perfectly adequate for a night's normal foxing session. You get two 18650 batteries, which leads me nicely onto the battery compartment. Very easily accessible and super rugged. You've got this lock catch here, so you just pull that down. It's got a bit of a click. It is, it is relatively stiff, but it means you're not gonna accidentally open it. When you pull the battery compartment down, I love the fact that when you just pull it out, the battery comes with it because it's got this tough nylon it's not a, a, a flimsy piece of ribbon 
it's got a tough nylon band, much like a, a small seat belt, if you like, and then you can put your spare battery in, you know, put that rubberized cap on, uh, and then lock it back in place. Um, so you can do that out in the field. There we go, and that battery is not going anywhere. It's tough and it's rubberized and it's sealed, so it does get, you know, is a little stiff, uh, but that's because it's IPX rated, so it's not going to let any moisture in there. Uh, and again, you probably saw last time out we were out foxing in, in some pretty miserable foggy conditions. All of the kit got quite damp, um, you know, and this was still working absolutely fine. In terms of the menu setups and stuff, if you've used any of the Hype Micro products beforehand, the menu's very similar, uh, so the software will be quite familiar to you. It's pretty easy to navigate, and you can do it all with these buttons on here. The one extra feature, and it's a first for a Hype Micro product, um, is the Falcon has something called um, Image Pro Boost. Image Pro Mode is what it's called. Um, so it has a Pro Mode that you can activate and that will enhance the picture detail. So again, and there's no real reason why you wouldn't just have that on and kind of leave it on all of the time. Uh, but what you'll notice is a fairly significant increase in contrast when you're looking at an animal. Um, again, I videoed um, a munt jack um, a few weeks ago just, just before it went through a hedge. And you could see all of the different patches of heat um, on that animal, clearly identifying its markings and even actually being able to sex the animal uh, as well, which would be a very handy thing to do for deer stalkers um, or people managing deer parks. Um, the other really nice feature is the smoothness of the focus ring. Uh, and again, so it's nice and smooth and it's not stiff either. So if one hand is slightly weaker than the other, you're not gonna need a massive amount of grip or again, using it out in the cold, um, it's gonna be nice and easily focusable for you too. The eye cup itself is made of a nice soft rubber and I think that actually that would feel quite at home on an expensive pair of binoculars uh, but it offers the ability to bring it up to the eye, it's nice and comfortable and if you are travelling along in the car and you bang it on your eye it's not going to hurt. Um, I have used um, spotters in the past with quite firm rubber eye cups uh, and after a couple of hours of using them in the field it can make it quite uncomfortable. Whereas this, um, because of the way it's designed, it's easy to hold and it's easy to use. Um, so after several hours of being out with it, you don't gonna get, you're not going to get um, any kind of fatigue um, you know, just from using it. Um, I would recommend, personally, excuse me, using it with two hands because the base mag is again slightly higher than it is on other products uh, meaning that um, very small movements here when you're looking at an animal two three hundred yards away might mean it's a little bit shaky so um, hold it fairly firmly with one hand and then you can just focus using the other but it will also uh, help you stabilize that image as well well, there we go. That's a slightly more in-depth look at the FQ50 um, spotter. Certainly a very practical, um, handy spotter out in the field. The quality of it, pretty much unrivaled, um, you will find at the moment. And for the price point, um, you're going to do extremely well to find something better. Um, as you know, there are many of the hype products that are doing exceptionally well on the market now, and for good reason. They're backed up by a really good warranty. They do what they say on the tin. They're very happy to take feedback uh, and make the products even better. Um, so if you haven't got yourself um, to a demo evening to have a look for a Falcon FQ50, uh, then I urge you to do that fairly quickly. Um, if you're in the market for a thermal spotter, um, this certainly should be extremely high on your um, shortlist, um, if not at the top. It certainly helps me out massively, um, and it's accounted already for quite a few foxes. Um, and that said, let's get back on with the foxing action where I'll be using the Falcon FQ50 along with this Stellar rifle scope to see if we can capture one more fox before we head home. You're probably wondering how I actually know the exact distance. Well, I've actually got the Griffin spotter with the laser rangefinder in my pocket, so I pinged it, and that's how come I know how far it is. I'm going to let him come to me, I think. Hopefully I'll just walk up this dike. So I give the fox um, a good few minutes, uh, in fact, while he's mooching around. Um, he's got plenty of mice to keep him occupied and that's what he keeps going after in this field again. 
you'll see in a few minutes time that um, you can really see the mice stand out. Bearing in mind the fox is still best part of 200 yards away. Uh, so again, it's a few minutes later now and you can actually see him now trying to capture one of these mice. So I thought I'd capture this before I went over to the Stella um, for the kill shot. So even the Stella there look picking out that mouse just in front of the fox there. Now I'm flicking um, in and out, just sense checking the distance and seeing what it looks like when I zoom in. Uh, and I'm also just uh, conscious that there is a house to the right. So I don't want to let it walk too far to the right. I want to be able to take it certainly before it gets to that house. So we've got a nice safe backstop. After playing the footage back um, when I got home, I realised the reason it needed a follow-up shot was that first one, as I pulled the trigger, was a tiny bit low, so it got it in the low part of the chest, uh, but I certainly made sure of it with a fairly swift follow-up shot. Well, that's a result. I was actually... I'd already taken my picture, put the, um, I even took my wellies off, put this fox in the uh, car, just turned around for a quick scan in front of the, uh, in front of the farm here and, um, well, there was another fox there, so hopefully that's a dog, but that's two down, what a result. Well, as I said, that one was messing around at the end of this dike here. Um, had to move a little bit further forward. I even had the engine running. So I had the engine running to warm the car up because it's just really damp and <sighs> moist as you can see. I couldn't even see through the scope particularly well because um, it fogged up from when I'd got my mouth near it. But once again, it's damp, it's not brilliant conditions, but the uh, hike spotter and stellar scope combo does the business again. Landowner will be happy, that's two foxes down. It was a bit further than I thought. It needed a uh, it needed a follow up shot. Okay, that was further than I thought. Paste that back. It look a good size that one. We've had the vixen, so. We'll assume this is the dog over here. Good sized fox. The vixen. Smelly one. A little bit far back that one. Thick fox. Longish one. There's Bill out. You see a license plate over there. Not a fair way. So sticking around for that extra hour paid dividends, so we ended up with two that evening. Right, it's Fox's final thoughts. Last but not least, I said I'd share with you my top tip for zeroing a thermal rifle scope. You only need two things, a piece of cardboard and some of this. You can get it from the Team Fox at Amazon shop. It's tin foil tape, sticky back, uh, two inch squares. Simply put a piece uh, horizontally and uh, or vertically uh, and horizontally to form a cross. Even at 100 yards, that still shows up a perfectly nice cross for you to be able to zero on. And the other thing you'll need to do is make sure you tilt that cardboard box back a little bit. That little bit of angle will significantly increase um, the rate in which uh, the reflection is spotted or that heat reflection uh, is seen by the thermal scope and it makes zeroing um, your scope nice and easy. Next time up, we'll be taking a look at 
some of Fox's funny moments throughout the year. Yes, I've kept some of the outtakes. It doesn't always go um, to plan and very smoothly. Plus, um, we'll also be taking at, uh, a look at yet another uh, innovative product from Hype Micro. This is the Cheetah A3 in one. Thank you very much for making it this far and watching. Take care, stay safe, Merry Christmas, and as always, happy shooting. <laughs>